This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit provides information on how you can lead a healthy lifestyle. I'm the host, Josie Bidwell. Search for and subscribe to Southern Remedy on any podcasting app to not miss any episode. Okie dokie, folks. Welcome back. Horticulture's Fell to Rushing, and this is the Gestalt Garden. It's one of many local productions of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. And we're going to be talking about gardening, so there's some things on your... Yes, we really are going to talk about it. Uh, I know some of you have concerns. Some of you have given up. Um, and I think both of those can be addressed. But mostly, if you have some things you'd like to chat about, uh, some things you'd like to plan for this coming year, some things you've, you've got concerns about, give us a call. I won't try to sell you anything. I won't try to talk you into anything. And matter of fact, I've got a pretty... Um, uh, a pretty laid back approach towards gardening unless you're involved professionally uh, somehow in horticulture gardening is largely done for our for our psychology for our for for sociology for our our own good and for the well-being of our neighbors so uh, if there's some things we can do to help in both those areas give me a call i've got a pretty wide open um really wide open mind Matter of fact, uh, Java, you, you've seen my yard. You know what my yard looks like, don't you? Yeah, it's 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 all over the place. <laughs> it, it, it is, but a lot of people don't realize that that that's not the way I see gardening. That's just the way I garden professionally. Because you know, I work with people who have beautiful lawns, uh, tightly pruned hedges, topiaries, uh, production gardens. Um, but when I get home. It's a playground for me, and it's something I'm not recommending other people do. They say, well, you ought to see Felder's Yard. Well, no, you know, it's like going to the state fair. You don't do that all the time, but you do it for the entertainment and the interest. So a lot of people don't garden outside the lines because they're afraid of what people think about them. And uh, I'm thinking, well, we could find some ways to do that anyway. So, hey, how are your kids de- 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 Did y'all get snow or just ice last week? Uh, really just the ice. North Mississippi really got hit with some, some significant snow, but the Jackson metro area, central Mississippi, um, just a lot of ice and, you know, uh, a lot of virtual school and, and no school. So that's 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 been happening at the Chapman household. Yeah, has, has Crystal been able to work from home, or did she go into to school? No, every, everybody's been been working from you know at home for the most part. Only us MPBers and other media people have been out in the streets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been doing a good bit of walking. It snowed here. Uh, you know, this is my last week in in England, my winter home here. And uh, matter of fact, I'm coming home this next week, and I've got a lecture next um next saturday so i'm hitting the ground running but i'll be back in the studio but we got a a lot of snow here this past week in northern england and i went to uh one of the royal horticulture society uh show gardens one of their botanic gardens it's called bridge north and just outside manchester and took some wonderful pictures of a garden covered with snow that i've got pictures of the same garden in a summertime and in the fall so i've got uh you know before during and after shots of what a garden can and should look like. And that's what I've been trying, Java, is to get ideas on how to make my garden look good, even in January, even after we've had some really, really bad weather, you know, using plants that a lot of people are already familiar with. So designing a garden that looks as good in the winter. So you're not going to hear me saying, oh, I wish it was so, I can't wait till spring. No, spring will take care of itself and spring is easy. But gardening in the wintertime, having a garden to enjoy the winter, is not any harder than having a garden you can enjoy in the summer. You know, you can design it to look good and to work well without a whole bunch of effort, without having to expose yourself. So that's what I'm all about, is getting the most out of every single month of the year rather than moaning and groaning and wishing for just spring. So maybe I'm wrong on that, but uh, if anybody has any questions about what they can put in their garden that looks good right now, I'm ready for it. 
Yeah, and that's all you always say that, Felder, that, you know, here in Mississippi, we can have several gardens throughout the year or, you know, iterations of the um, gardening growing. So we don't have to wait for a specific time period. I mean, this the ice is, you know, an anomaly <laughs> that we got. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but, but it's something we need to expect. I mean, you know, if you don't expect it to get hot and dry in the summer, you're not being aware. If you're not expecting to be cold and, and icy in the wintertime, you know, the, the, if it happens just once every day, but both of these happen every year. So I'm saying let's, let's plan for it. Matter of fact, uh, I have a, uh, a series of publications. You've heard me say this before, Java. There's somebody who wants to grow fruit in the landscape in Mississippi. I got a brochure that I put together. Here's the best types of fruit that grow in Mississippi. Here's the best varieties. Uh, same thing with roses. Daffodils, not all daffodils grow well in Mississippi. But I, uh, so I send these to people all the time. But I also have one I put together specifically for winter gardening in the South. How to have a really, really nice looking garden in the middle of the winter. And, um, and that looks good the rest of the year, too. So, anyway, if anybody's interested in, in, uh, in this list of good plants, a little bit of how to pull it off, uh, you know, they can shoot me an email at my blog, Fellow Rushing. Dot blog. It's called Felder Rushing's Guide to Winter Plants. And, and and by the way, it involves putting bowling balls out in your yard. Well, you know, sometimes you just need a little, <laughs> or the, uh, as they as they say, some some accoutrements. <laughs> yeah, accoutrements. Yeah, uh, little little uh, bling. We call them uh, hard features or or whatever. But you know, if you have nothing out there but lawn. You know, you could go out there and you could spray paint circles and stripes on it if you want to. You don't have to. Or else you can mow every other strip. So you have like a – anyway, there's all sorts of approaches to it, just like how you cut your hair. No two people should have to do it the same way. The main thing is to suit your fancy. And and you know what? One of the prettiest things in my garden in the winter, this just rankles people. It just drives some people around the twist. But there's nothing prettier than a glass bottle tree. It doesn't have to be in the front yard or poking out of your neighbors, and it doesn't have to be all multiple colors or even blue. It could just be green bottles or green and white bottles, but it glints in the sun. It sparkles. It'll make you smile. It's sort of like putting on a nice pair of earrings for folks to do that, but but a, a nice bench, an old log, a bird bath, uh, a, a group of bird houses, a bottle tree, a big rock, anything like that can, can create a, a focal point. And the garden can come and go around that without any trouble at all. A lot of people just don't think about it because they feel like they're exposing themselves. Well, you expose yourself every time you decide what color tie to put on. You know, you don't have to go with just blue or red. You can do a paisley if you want to. So anyway, that that's my approach. Hard features like the walkways. Uh, night lighting is really important at this time of day. Subtle night lighting. Uh, a little fire pit if you want one, but uh, any kind of of stepping stones or or an antique urn or colorful containers or just two or three big pots on your porch or your patio with different color winter shrubs and flowers. Create a nice little focal point with maybe a dwarf mandina, which grow in a pot, and maybe an iris or some daffodils and pansies and monkey grass and cascading. But, you know, you can create a really cool little focal spot with color and texture and shapes even in a real small area, like putting on a brooch, you know, if you're going out to a fancy place, put a little brooch on your dress. And what it does is it creates attention and conversation. So anyway, we're here to talk with folks about what's going on in their gardens. Let's start in in Jackson talking with Jim. Morning, Jim. How are you? Good morning, Felder. I'm doing fine. Um, I have a bunch of azaleas in my backyard. They're too big to cover up uh, during this freeze. And, um, I got to wondering if maybe it would be helpful if um, I cut them way back before the freeze ever came so I could better insulate the roots with a little shower. Well, you could, but there go your flowers. See, you know, that's a drawback with pruning that, you know, uh, azaleas, uh, blueberries, even nandinas that have red berries. These are spring bloomers, and cutting them back does as much or more damage to the part you cut off than just leaving it there. So, for, you know, really, I, I, I'm born and raised up in the Delta. Work, my family had a garden center. I've been working with azaleas and, and other borderline plants all of my life. And for the most part, they'll do fine. If they get some damage after they finish blooming in springtime, 
cut them back then, but I wouldn't cut the nose off just to spite the face. You know, okay. And, and, if, and, and plus, if if you ride around town, you'll see ninety nine point five percent of the gardens in Jackson they don't cover anything up. Most of it does fine. Okay, great. Thanks so much. You bet. Oh, one, one last thing: if if you didn't get a good rain or if it's frozen out there, a lot of plants will dry out in cold wind and sun um, just because their roots are frozen. So if you could, you can go out there before a hard freeze. Even today, because it's going to get really, really cold tonight and tomorrow night in Jackson, and just give them a really good soaking. You'd be surprised at how much that revised plants, plus that water as it freezes, it gives off heat, which rises up, and it can help a lot. So just a really good soaking right before a hard freeze. That really does help a lot. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Okay, good luck on it. Thanks. All righty, Java. Now I was just looking at, my, and, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I, I put my uh, my pickup truck with a garden in the back in my driveway back in in uh, in the uh, first part of December. So I just parked my truck, and in the back has got a garden with all sorts of stuff: small shrubs and herbs and flowers and succulents and variegated yuccas and dwarf agaves and uh, oregano and and parsley and so many other things. And most of it is going to do just fine. Some I have to pull it out, stick something else in the hole, but that's what gardeners do. Next time I'll think twice about planting something that can't take cold weather. But in general, you plant according to what's about to happen. Uh, this I have, One of the reasons why my garden looks like it does, it looks like uh, Java. One time my mother described my garden is looking like a kaleidoscope having a stroke. What? I mean, it's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You wonder where I get this from, right? <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on, but one of the ways that people like me um, tolerate having a garden that's, let's say, um, well, there, there's a really interesting word it's called gall- gallimaufry. A gallimaufry means a, a, a mixture of all sorts of stuff. Is uh, We don't see the whole garden like our neighbors do. What we do is we see the parts we're focused on. So we're like looking at things through a, through a camera lens. You only see what is right through the lens. Or looking at my garden like through a toilet paper tube. I see all sorts of little vignettes, and I separate them. Uh, it's like going to a buffet. You look at a buffet, and you can't decide what to go with. So you get a little everything, and, uh, and, and, but you just eat it one at a time. But uh, anyway, some of the plants that look the best right now in my garden, uh, I've got a uh, several evergreen plants that have really, really good shapes and textures. I'm talking about Nandina, uh, dwarf palmetto. I've got golden variegated yucca. It's a cloak form of yucca, not the stabbing kind. And it's got brilliant gold uh, and green variegation. Uh, I've got uh, a red tip photinia, uh, junipers, um, uh, arborvitae, agave, just plants that have interesting shapes and textures in the evergreen. Uh, but I also have some plants that, that drop their leaves in the wintertime, and they still look really good. Oh, and I've got hollies that have got berries on them. Uh, but there's there's several different kinds of, of, uh, of plants that have interesting bark, like river birch. I've got a, a thorny plant, some people call a hardy orange. Um, it's got a lot of good thorns on it, but anyway... There are some plants that flower in the dead of winter, and if they, they might even be blooming right now. Relatively mild the past couple of days compared to what it's been like, but uh, flowering quince is about to bloom. Uh, there's some camellias. I know a lot got damaged, but camellias, um, mahonia with yellow flowers, winter jasmine. Uh, I've got a shrub called winter honeysuckle. It's got a wonderful Latin name, Lonisra fragrantissima. It's not a pretty plant during the summertime, but it's covered with uh, flowers about the size of the end of your thumb that are just really, really fragrant. Uh, it's a good, dependable winter plant. So between that and the uh, the urns and the, the uh, bird baths, one of the things that people can do that's the easiest to attract color and motion and drama is put on a bird feeder. It doesn't have to be a fancy, expensive feeder. You can get a, 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 a just a... a uh, a saucer for a big outdoor pot, you know, just a saucer pot bar, set it out there and put some plain old cheap black oil sunflower seed out there. And you'd be amazed at the birds that try, try to put it out in the open or up on a bench or something where a cat can't get to it because cats are 
Well, they're just, I know people love cats. I love cats too, but they like to kill birds. Um, and, you know, maybe live with a few squirrels if you can, but a bird feeder will attract color and motion and drama. and It'll get your eyes out the window into the garden and thinking about something besides the weird stuff that's going on on the news. And Felder, um, you will have a, this weekend and actually what, last, last earlier this week, you'll have the prettiest bird ice skating rink you've ever seen um, <laughs> out, out, in, out this, in your yard. <laughs> is this personal experience? Have you seen the birds scooting around? Well, you know, I mean, every, all of the water was frozen and it is a, it's a, it's a fountain in Clinton and I hate I didn't go see it um, this, uh, this time of the freeze, but it's always just funny because the fountain doesn't stop but it just keeps freezing and icing over and icing over. And it's the same thing that would happen with your bird feeder. You put yeah. fresh fresh water out, but it's going to freeze and make a nice ice skating rink for the birds. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, and, and speaking of which, this, this really, you know, birds don't depend on humans for survival. But we have gotten rid of a lot of their natural food sources, you know, by cutting down trees and shrubs and vines and all that. And uh, you really can't help urban birds. By putting some water out there, and I know it'll freeze, but if you'll if you'll keep some open water, uh, and if you've got kid, you know send your kids out there with some warm water to pour over. But if you can keep open water out there, there's lots of wildlife that really depends on it. You know they they need water to keep their energy stuff going. So you know if you can put some water out there, you will not only have birds uh, and and maybe even some other wildlife, um, but and it's interesting. But it's it's good for them too. So that's an easy thing to do. So you know, taking care of the birds. There have been people on the Mississippi Gardening Facebook thing. Uh, somebody posted a picture of a strange little bird. It's a pretty little bird that comes down here for the winter time, and uh, it's called a rufous sided towhee. I'm, I'm not making this up. <coughs> Excuse me. When my daughter Zoe was 11, she was pretty. Well, she's still an avid bird watcher. But uh, we had bird feeders out on the back deck, and she said she saw a rufous-sided towhee. I'm thinking, there's no such thing, rufous really, whatever. And she showed it to me in a book, and sure enough, there was a rufous-sided towhee. It's a, uh, about the size of a robin. It's in the sparrow family, but it's black, it's white. It's got little sort of rusty barn red uh, splotches on it. And it's a really cool bird that, you, you know, you, you will only see – a, in the wintertime, and B, if you're looking out the window and see, there's something that attracts them. So uh, yeah, it's just lots of real interesting little stuff. Even a, even a child notices stuff like this. It pours out to, to old grown-ups like me. So anyway, uh, I know a lot of people are still hunkering down. Zoe, I helped my daughter Zoe with a new raised bed this past fall, uh, November, first part of December. And we did the whole thing start and finish in one day. Well, Part of one afternoon, part of the next morning, but less than a day of uh, building a box, digging the dirt, bringing us the stuff, adding it to her dirt, mulching it, and then planting a bunch of winter stuff. And they put a fence around it, put a birdhouse out there, and a couple of sticks with some, some bottles on it just for some color. But she went out this past week beautifully, and she, she put some, some, some upside-down pots in it uh, that are taller than the plants. She draped plastic over it put some landscape cloth over that, and then she went out the uh, day before yesterday and uncovered it because these plants can take freezing weather. What they can't take is 9 degrees or 15 degrees. So anyway, so she's going to cover it up later this afternoon because it get down, get down to the to the uh, lower 20s or the upper teens in, the, uh, in Jackson. So she's going to cover it up tonight and then uncover it Sunday. But freezing weather is okay. Hard freezes. Or what was banned. Anyway, she's been having a good time covering, uncovering, and it's gotten her involved and out in the yard, which I think is a good thing. And hey, making good sure when she cover it, it goes all the way down to the soil, correct? <laughs> That's right. That's right, man. Somebody's paying attention to this program. <laughs> hey, let's slide down to D-Lo and talk with the D. D has got to be some puns. D from D-Lo. D-D-Lo. That's right. Hey, What's I want to know, I want to know what those little berries because I've been eating them, and I think they might make, make a good table wine or, or wine because they they got a little little pinch to it like muscadine, but I don't too much favor muscadine wine. But I think with the economy that it is, we're going to have to start making everything, even our wine is so high. You know what I'm saying? So do yeah, you do. know the name of those berries? 
Well, there, there's, there's several out there that you can make wine out of, or juice or jelly or whatever. You can make jelly and juice out of uh, elderberries, which are in the summertime. Uh, we have a, a native vine called muscadine. It's a type of grape called muscadine that, that grows here in the south. And there's some really, really good ones that produce a lot. Through, you know, the wild ones are kind of iffy. You know, it's just like meeting. You know, it's like wild dogs. Some some wild dogs are are smarter than others. Well, same thing with 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 wild vines. If you can go to a garden center that sells muscadine vines and just get one that's what they call self fertile. It's not separate male and female. You can plant one muscadine vine on a twenty foot section of fence and make a, a, a plenty of juice. And, uh, and and by the way, a lot of people don't like muscadine wine because. It was made the old-fashioned way with too much sugar. You don't have to put, you know, and just like Grandma, you, she always put too much sugar in her fig preserves. You can tell fig preserves from just sugar yeah. water. So, yeah. see, so you know, there's some varieties yeah. that aren't that they don't have that real strong flavor like 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 the old-fashioned kind. So, but muscadines, elderberries, um, and those are the the, the most productive uh, berries we can make wine out of. Okay, let me ask you this. No, I was just throwing some seeds in a hole, and I just didn't pay any attention to it. But we had a severe drought. So yeah. I think that might be a technique because it, 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 so somehow I've been seeing like vertical farming, but I actually, they went down about a foot, and they produced the best uh, greens. And I was like, wow, you know, that might be some, some new technique where we, instead of putting it, putting the uh, feed up on the soil, go down a foot because I did it in two spots and they was the only plants that survived this severe drought, you know. So I'm going to have to change my game because it's, the sun is really killing me. I get farming. Yeah. I feel well, sorry. I, I feel, you know. I, I tell you something that, that, that works, uh, and, and some seeds will do that. A lot of them won't. They, they don't, they, you know, they won't come up if they're buried too deep. They don't get enough sun. They can't break through. But if you'll plant them not really deep and then cover the ground with some bark or leaves or, you know, cover the ground up with, with something loose, that keeps the ground cool. It keeps it moist, and the seed and plants can come up through it easier than a bunch of dirt. So just using bark after you plant stuff, and that's what I do. And that, that way they're deep without being buried. They can, they can push up through bark mulch and leaves a whole lot better than they push up through dirt. But uh, anyway, uh, I don't know, uh, in two, three weeks, February the 17th, I'm doing my, my seminar. I do a free seminar every year in a garden center in Jackson called Hutto's, and it's about growing stuff in your yard that's easy to grow, that looks good, that's pretty, and when you're tired of looking at it, you can eat it. You know, there's different kind of fruit plants that do well as just regular yard plants like figs and all. Um, and anyway, that's going to be a February the seventeenth at Hutto. So anyway, uh, let, let me know. Let me know how your experiment what does this year. What day that's going to be on? Saturday, February the seventeenth. I, I do it every year at Hutto. Okay, all right, man. That, 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 okay, thank you. Okay, appreciate it. That was D. He's he's uh, planting stuff deep. And I'm thinking you can plant it deep, but I would use mulch to make the deep. Hey, let's slide up to Oxford now and see what's going on with Anna. Morning, Anna. How are you doing? I'm uh, cold and depressed, and I can't get out of the house. <laughs> In fact, nothing comes down our street. No mail well, for a, a week. Well, that's what bottle trees and wine are for. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't drink, and I think the cold would crack the bottle, okay? <laughs> could, could be. But, well, it, well ha- it, happy New Year. So what's, what's up? <laughs> well, um, I moved to Mississippi because I was in Chicago 27 years, and I thought I'd never have to go through that again. And yeah. now I'm going through it again. Um, but it... This is the worst because it's not only the cold, it's the ice. And you literally are, are trapped. Yeah. You know, I'm, at, I'm yeah. at the end of a street. Nothing, not even the garbage man will come down. <laughs> yeah, and as I recall, I've been to your, to your lovely garden before. It's up a long drive. So if you get down to the bottom, you might not be able to get back up to the top. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's kind of on a hill, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you well, get, down. Get, get, get you a good book. And uh, put, you know, That's put a bird I'm... feeder out, and put a bird yep. feeder outside the window, and, That's uh, what I'm and doing. this yep. this this too shall pass. 
Well, yeah, and it better be quick because I've had no mail for a week and I need to get out to the store. And But on the other hand, is this nature's way of saying we're going to wipe the slate clean? No. Nope. <laughs> so you can nope. start again. <laughs> no, because, you know, people in northern Europe, they're used, it gets much worse. People in Minnesota have terrific gardens in the spring, summer, and fall. It's just a matter of planning ahead and taking I mean, but we we actually can do more in the south than our friends can in Chicago or Vermont or Minnesota and places like that. It's just a matter of planning ahead. And uh, this is not, uh, the and truth is, I'm, I'm in northern England right now, and it gets oh, okay. snowy a lot. It gets, you know, it gets ice, uh, and it's cold. The wind is blowing, and, you know, eh, on and on and on. Gasoline is ten dollars, the equivalent of ten dollars a gallon. But, okay. but, 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 but you adapt. You plan ahead. You just roll with the flow. And then, if something doesn't work, you try to think: Is this going to happen again? What can we do ahead of time to keep it to to ameliorate it? I guess you're growing sheep up there. Whereabouts are you in Northern England? I'm in Lancashire. Oh, okay. Close, my dad, very, cl- my dad close, was Liber- close to Liverpool. Um, close to Liverpool. Oh, okay. My my dad was from the other side. He was from Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's and there, and there's jokes about both places. Uh, yeah, yeah. He used to tell me he used to swim in the Tyne. I can't imagine what it was like swimming in the Tyne. <laughs> well, because because they didn't know any better. That's why the Yorkies. <laughs> anyway, yeah, good luck. Good luck. Get your garden mag- magazine and relax, or, or or go you know see if you can find Garden World with uh, you know and and just look at how, what they're doing. Other just find a way to get through. Yeah, thanks for calling, Anna. And like I was saying earlier, Felder, North Mississippi, Oxford, and you know other counties really up, up up there. Yeah, they they really they really got they're, hit. They're, they're hammered. They're now hammered. we got, we yeah. got a cheesy tune and uh, questions. Answers to unasked questions, um, Felder. But first, let's talk with Linda in Jackson before we get into that. All right. Linda, how are you doing today? What's up? I am fine. How are you all doing today? So far, so good. Trying to stay warm. <laughs> yes. I have a question about my plant. I am new at this. I have a snake plant. Right. I had um, the weather was cold here in Jackson. In the, Freezing, and I put plastic over my plant. <laughs> when I woke up the next day, when I woke up the next day, it was limp. Oh yeah. What can What can I do to bring it back? So I, need I don't to know. Throw it away you know this, and... this particular kind of plant, which is by the way one of my favorites, so a lot of people call it snake plant. Some people call it mother-in-law tongue. Uh, the Latin name is Sansevera. I have. Uh, 19 different kinds of it. I really like the kind of plant, but they're tropical. They're not cactus, but they're succulents, and they got a lot of moisture in the leaves. That's how they get through the living in the desert, and that moisture can freeze, just like in a banana or can of plant. So if they freeze, the cells inside the leaf bust, and it leaks all the juice out. So if it's limp, then that part won't come back. The best you can do is hope, just cut off the nasty looking stuff, the slimy stuff, and hope that the, the part in the in the soil sends out new growth in the spring. But it, it, it will not take hard freezing temperature, even being covered up. It's uh it's like putting a it's it's like putting a a um a fern or something outside. It it's gotta be brought in. So uh, other than cutting off the slimy stuff and hoping that it comes back out with new leaves in the spring and not much else we can do. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I need to just get rid of those. Yeah, well, okay. you know, cut, cut, cut them. You know, if, if you cut them back and just sort of poke around, they, the, the, the root is sort of like a, it's like a sideways carrot. You know, it's, it's like a, a firm little thing in the ground. It's not a bulb, but it's like a bulb. And if it's not mushy, the plant might put out new leaves in the spring with no, no trouble. And I would definitely cut it back and bring it in the rest of the winters because it's going to get cold tonight, okay. too. Okay, okay. And I have another one another question on that about a pond setter um plant. Now what what what, 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 what 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 kind of plant? I think you pronounce it pond setter. Oh yeah, yeah, pond setter, right, 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 right. Right. Yes. With the red so, red flower uh, looking thing. Yes. So do they last year round? Not outside. I only see them during holidays. 
Well, that's because they, they don't live outside in the wintertime. They're native to Mexico. They make small trees, sort of like a, like a little mimosa tree in the, uh, down in the tropics where it doesn't freeze. Uh, but if you keep it in a pot, after the season, when it starts to drop those, those red leaf-looking things, you can just prune it back a little bit to maybe a foot or so tall, give it some water, and then it'll, it'll keep growing. You just got to, you know, so pruning it back will, will stimulate some real fast new growth, but you got to keep it in in the wintertime. That's that's the only thing. Okay, that is, yes, it is inside. It has been right. inside the house. Right. But the well, when it drops, all when, it, when it drops all those leaves, just tr- trim it back. You can cut it back to where there's not a leaf left on it, and it'll sprout out with no problems at all. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Miss Linda. Appreciate it. You stay warm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have a great all day. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Java. I sent you a really cheesy, bad cheesy tune. We got time to do it after after my my answer thing. And now it's <laughs> <laughs> for founders answers to unasked questions. One day I'm gonna okay. get some music for that. <laughs> yeah, we well, need to do that. Uh, back in the 1870s, a scientist misplaced a decimal point when they were measuring spinach's iron content. Spinach. Uh, so it ha- came up this myth that that spinach had a lot, got a lot of iron in it, 10 times. It's not true. But because of that, a lot of people think that spinach is good for you. And then 100 years ago, uh, and actually in 1919, a cartoon character named Popeye was invented. As a matter of fact, he came up with his own, his, own two, his own regular program in 1923, which is a century ago. Um, uh, we can't really grow spinach well here in the summertime uh, because it gets too hot. When it gets really, really cold, it freezes. When it gets hot, the, it bolts and goes to flour, and it turns bitter. So a lot of people in the summertime, they don't realize you can eat sweet potato leaves just like you can spinach. Sweet potato leaves uh, are, are milder tasting, uh, but they taste like spinach, and we grow a lot of sweet potatoes. Malabar spinach is a pretty little vine with green or red stem. It's a good spinach substitute, uh, even though it's kind of slimy like okra. Um, anyway, those are good spinach plants for the summertime. Now's the time to plant spinach, but here's what I want to do. I'm giving a talk this next weekend uh, in Arkansas, not very far from a place called Alma, uh, which is this side of Fort Smith, which is proclaimed to be the spinach capital of the world. It has a larger lifetime, larger life Popeye statue. Uh, and by the way, Popeye was a precursor to super, superhero. Mario, the Donkey Kong Nintendo guy, was supposed to be Popeye. Anyway, I thought it a uh, Popeye Day, first time, t- January the 17th, two days ago, 2024, the first annual Popeye Day. And with that, I thought we'd play just a little snippet from a tune that all of us who have been paying attention on television for the past hundred years or so were recognized. I was thinking, I wonder what the sales of spinach were back in the day when Popeye kind of burst on the scene because, you know, spinach is not a, a lot of people's favorite, I'll, I'll say, or at least not kids, exactly. but they used to try to make kids eat it because they were like, you get muscles like Popeye. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, that's the reason why they, they, just, the, that they declared a Popeye day because he always spiked. This, this came about right at the beginning of the Depression, and uh, every time Popeye came out of this stuff, it raised the, the sales of edible leafy greens, including spinach. I mean, it always did that. And uh, that's, that's the reason why uh, it was named a, uh, an official holiday, because it reminds us to eat, eat your vegetables, <laughs> right? Anyway, let's slide down to Mobile, Alabama, talk with Gene. Gene, how are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. Uh, I, I thought maybe I might have been smoking some kind of funny cigarette after hearing that song there, but I did. <laughs> but it, well, but it wasn't that at all. But anyway, I called you about the crotons. I uh, had bought some plants from over to, I'm in Mobile, of course. I don't live far from the park or where the, where the uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the place, where the garden center is over there. Anyway, yeah. I bought these 10 croton plants, and I put them out. They've been outside all this time. And I did. I took them in down there for the hard freeze come, but I I must have left them out a little longer because they stayed there several days. I brought them in the house, and now the leaves are falling off of them. Is any hope for them? But I just leave, let them see what the hell they do. 
Man, now what what kind of plants would it be again? I was paying attention. You were descri- had so many good descriptions. I forgot the name of the plant. <laughs> well, yeah, I did too. I had to put the stick up. I was like, remember, <laughs> Croton. Croton, yeah, little- uh, Croton. Yeah, cr- crotons are they're hardcore hot dry thing. You start seeing them outside from oh around uh, I'm gonna say Orlando South and then Corpus Christi and all like that. They really like hot weather and they're very sensitive to freeze. It, they, a lot of times their leaves will shed just from being moved. If you bring them in for the winter, they drop those leaves. They put new leaves on, but if you just move them from one place to another, they drop their leaves. So the uh, best thing you can do is sort of bend the, the twigs. If they still feel kind of firm, if they snap yeah. or if you prune them, you know, then, then if you'll put them in a sunny spot that's warm, the new growth will come out nice and firm. But at any rate, expect them to drop the leaves when you bring them in. No way around that. Just prune them back like little shrubs. Put them in a sunny window if you can, and uh, let the new growth come on out. They just well, uh, let, me they just, you, uh, let me ask you this: I got a greenhouse, but I don't have any heat in it. Can I put it in there? And they'd be all right. I need to bring one in the house. Well, it depends on how cold it gets. Uh, you know, crotons again. Well, they're, they're 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 hot climate. They're from Africa. They're from a hot part of Africa, and they like warmth. Uh, they're sort of like tomato plants. If a tomato will make it, a croton will make it. But, you know, if it gets too cold, a tomato is going to bite the bullet too. So what you might want to do is is, uh, is put them uh, up a little bit higher in the greenhouse because heat rises. And put a little small electric heater out there. Maybe one of these, you know, not the electric heater where you can see it turn red, but the kind that's got oil in it looks like a radiator. They, they yeah. gives off a good, and it's not a lot of energy involved, but the one that looks like a little miniature radiator. Uh, right, and then right, put, right. Put, 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 the, put the plants up high because that's where the heat is. Or put you a sheet of plastic. Uh, if you got a pit ceiling, put a piece of plastic like a ceiling, you know, in there, so, you know, to, to make the ceiling a little bit lower. That'll help a little right. bit. Right. Well, a ceiling in the greenhouse is kind of old shape, but I could build this little box and put on them. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be great, you know, and anything you can do, you know, of course, it needs to be a pretty good-sized box because even a small heater can overheat a small box. Anyway, you're going to need a little supplemental heat just on the nights so when it's going to get below, I'm going to say, around 45 or 50 degrees. That's where tropical plants shut down, and below about 40 or so, they start getting damaged. So, you know, well, I, well, I try well, to keep... Well, good until the leaves fell off, probably. <laughs> Yeah, and well, I'm like I say, croton is, is one of those plants where they're notorious. If you move it from 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 indoors to out or from outdoors to in, um, those leaves, they, the plant says these leaves don't work anymore. It throws them off and grows new leaves for the new spot. So it, it, when you bring them in and when you put them out, just cut them back like a bush and let the new growth come on. I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna. I got a little empty apartment out there. I keep the heat on in there. I put them in one of them ones in there. Empty apartment with the heat on. Man, I'm gonna live with you. Well, I keep them on. I keep it on about, about sixty degrees, and never cause I don't want pipe that, freezing up in there. Yeah, if, if you can, if you can put it anywhere near a, a sunny window and water them for, they'll, they'll take dry quicker. Than they'll take too wet. But if you right. put them near a sunny window, just keep them above fifty. They should do fine. Well, I got all my other stuff covered up and everything, and they want the back steps on and on the south side of the house. I forgot about them. Yeah, they looked yeah. all right. They looked all right for, for a couple of days, and I said, "I better bring these in." <laughs> By the time I did that, it was too late. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they're 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 they're, they're, they're temperamental plants, and if you yeah. prune them back a little bit, you know, the, it's just like pruning a rose. You know, you take a big rose and cut it down low; it sprouts out stronger than ever. Same thing with croton. Sounds kind of like my wife, simple man. Oh, no. Hang on. Hey, we ain't going to me and Java. <laughs> nope, we ain't going there. <laughs> we, we're going to all get in trouble here. <laughs> I've been married 63 years singer, Romeo. <laughs> Good. Well, bless your heart. Uh, yeah, thank okay, you, man. Thank you. See you, Steve. Right, you bet. Bye. Oh, had to ho- head to head that one off, Java. Uh, Gene Gene calls in all the time. I like when Gene calls. He's oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but but still. <laughs> Still, there's some things make my skin crawl a little bit because uh, we walk on thin ice all the time, my friend. Hey, hey, listen, I just got over cold, and I'm thinking because of that, I got a little horse, and I could say, I'm Felder the Gardening Man. Felder the Gardening Man. Better not go there. Let's go to Steve and Gaucher. Okay, Steve, what's going on on the coast, man? Good morning. Hey, nice and warm down there, sunshine, and out the wind. Yeah, out of the wind, right? You turn yourself into a solar collector there. What's going on? Yeah, you know, uh, 
my mother gave me something called a Christmas cactus several times over the years, 20, 30 years yeah. or whatever. It never did have survived. And yeah. I was in a local grocery store and, uh, and they had one. Well, I was right. to, you know, you know, probably kill it and die. And yeah, I put it, put it there by the kitchen sink and watching. All of a sudden, the leaves started falling, getting thin and falling off in the bud. Yeah. Well, a little pop-up come up on my iPad, you know, about what, take pictures of plants or what to do and stuff. And it said add some sugar water to it. That thing popped up. It's so healthy looking. Just a comment. All that side. <laughs> yeah. Well, this but, is a... Uh... You know, as a from having studied plant physiology and all like that, I see this kind of thing all the time. It really, really doesn't work like that, but it doesn't hurt to do that. And what happened is you, you may have to hurt. Right there. Now, here, here's the thing about Christmas cactus. And, and, what, and some people, there's there's different kinds. There's some that bloom in the spring, some that bloom in the late fall, some bloom around Christmas, Christmas Easter, Thanksgiving cactus. But yeah. they're, all tr- they're all tropical tree dwellers. They live in trees. And hanging off of cliffs in the tropics, sort of like Spanish moss. And if they stay oh, too yeah, wet, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. But they are cactus. If they stay too wet, they rot. They, you know, because they're they're cactus. And you know, and so you what you want to do is you want to water it and then let it get almost dry before you soak it again. But keep them on the moist, not wet or dry side. And uh, and as long as they get any kind of sunshine at all. Uh, you can prune them back, and they'll sprout out. They branch out just like 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 nobody's business. So the main thing is not too cold, not too wet, a little bit of sunshine, and they should do fine. Yeah, I would treat it like a cactus. How do you propagate the thing, Felder? Well, those what, what we call the leaves. Leaf, leaf yeah. yeah, yeah. What what we call leaves? You know how they're you know, shaped sort of like a your big toenail. Those are actually flattened stems, and and every joint can root. Uh-huh. So what you do is you cut them back. The plant, the plant you cut back will sprout back out healthier than ever. The parts you cut off, root little short, short sections with two or three of those those uh, the joints on it, and just don't keep them too wet. They not they like bright light. They like humidity. They don't like to be kept wet. I gotta put them in sunlight then too. Well, well I like to appreciate yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't put them in all day sunshine. You know, uh, you know, it, w- okay. uh, you know, even on the Gulf Coast, humidity tends to intensify stuff. It, it, uh, so I'd put them where they get maybe some morning sun or late afternoon sun, or you know, dapple, you know, under a tree or something like that. Bright, bright, bright light, but not broiling hot sun. And just main thing, don't I'll keep them too the, wet. I put them underneath yeah. my uh, big old lime tree. Boy, it protects all my little top. Well, they call it, you know, family call it jungle. I call it a top of the it, garden and stuff. I got this big old lime tree that, it was, you know, back when the star, uh, Frederick and Lana, whatever, and it's just, I couldn't, I would usually trim them so it wouldn't come out from the bottom, but anyway, right. I wasn't able to take care of it because of it. And it's come out on the bottom. You talking about a big, nice, pretty canopy puts three to four or five hundred damn limes out every year, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it protects it. It protects the rest of it. Yeah. It get, yeah. get balls on the top now. Yeah, but look, well, here, I clipped it and it comes right back. Well, here's what here's what I do with your Christmas cactus. Find you some shallow a shallow pot. You know, most pots are as tall as y'all are big around. Find one that's this what, what kind of like a. They call it azalea pie. They're they're wider than they are tall because these things don't need a deep root system. Put some pretty good potting soil and put them where they get bright light, and they're not going to stay too wet because the, the pot's not too deep. They should do fine. Oh, I've got, yeah, i got one of these clay, whatever, uh, saucer or yeah, whatever. It'd be perfect. Yeah, well, mound it up. You know, if you could put it in a saucer, kind of mound it up like a, like a snow cut. You know, not in other words, it needs more than a couple of inches. But the uh, main thing is just not too wet. That's the big deal, not too wet. Um, yeah, okay, Felder, but All righty, man. It. Yeah. You bet. You have a good day yeah. up there. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Now let's slide up the up uh, Interstate 55 to Jackson to talk with Stephen. Stephen, how are you today? Good. How are you doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. Looking forward to getting back to Mississippi, although I'm trying to stay away because it's colder where you are. Than where I am Absolutely. in northern England. <laughs> Absolutely, there was, there was there was snow on the ground. If you can believe it, but um, uh, so I I was calling today, and I hope this isn't too broad of a question to answer. But um, I, I work at the Murray Bookstore, and it, me and my coworker, uh, we were we were uh, scheming during this cold that we wanted to grow a watermelon patch. 
Yeah. But we didn't know the first thing about it. And I was wondering if you might have any advice about how to start such a thing and, and uh, see it to fruition. Yeah, you're talking about up there at Liberia, though, right around the parking lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 What you, keep in mind that these are that these are vines, and they're going to run. So you're going to need to find a place, you know, around the periphery, kind of work up some dirt where there's plenty of sunshine, but where they got room to run without taking up too many parking spaces, and then uh, huh. go online, go online, and you know, and to any of the seed catalogs and look for one that's called. You know, there are a lot of compact varieties. That, you know, the the kinds that we buy at the store, those vines can run twenty feet or more, but there's some that are a lot more compact, and you know, and there's a whole bunch of them, and they don't have the great big melons. They're smaller, but they're easier to grow in smaller spaces. So, so uh, it shouldn't be a problem. You just need to find a place that's sunny, work the dirt up, you know, at least maybe three feet or so across and a shovel deep, and then plant you, you know, several of these seeds out there. And as the vines start to get out in the parking lot, push them back along the curb. Okay. And, and do you recommend, uh, 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 like, like uh, cutting the, the stems or, or, or nope. managing nope. them in any way? Nope. Nope. Just, just go online. You'll find some that are, that are, that are all, they're not bush type. But they're almost bush type compared to the ones out in fields that run in every direction. A lot of more. And I tell you what, if you'll holler at me, uh, I'm gonna be back in the next. Uh, this would be kind of fun because y'all have been real good to me with my books up at Lemuria. Maybe I come up there and we can do a little major, a uh, little melon planting thing up there. So holler at me. I would, I, I would absolutely. I'll send you an email. That would be lovely. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> you bet. Let's have some fun and t- say say hey to everybody. You know, so somebody oh, I was will. calling earlier. They were from from uh, Oxford said that they can't go any place. Well, you just need to get some gardening books. Just get some gardening yeah. books, and y'all got y'all got plenty of them at Lemuria. Oh, it's my, it's our best section. Uh, absolutely. Uh, All righty, man. Well, thank well, let's, let's get, well, thank let's, you. Let's again. get let's get together and have some fun. Maybe we can get Jeff Good to, to buy me a cup of coffee. <laughs> Felder, you over here cutting deals live hey, on air. Plus, you know, we're just trying to stay warm, and you know, we're trying to have good gamutlakite, good good. Uh, People getting together and helping each other hunker through it. That is true because we're coming up on this weekend. The temperatures are supposed to take another nose dive, and we'll just see what happens on the other side. Yeah, I got my daughter Zoe. She's going to cover our plants up one more tonight and tomorrow night, see what happens. And then we'll just take it from there. By the way, there's a, I know we're at the end of the program, but there's a, a really good word, a phrase I learned called ontological security. Ontological. That's uh, the the stable stage of mind you got when things are orderly and continuity, no chaos, no anxiety, gives meaning. Well, ontological security means keeping things normal. And I'm thinking, we don't want to do that. We want ontological shock. We want things to throw us into having to think and do something different and plan ahead and do better next time. That's the challenge, not just all bliss and all stuff like that. So for the next week, we're going to be thinking about what we can talk about next Friday after I get back and see what happens. See what my ontological shock has happened to the back of my pickup truck with all the flowers going in the back of it in this weird Mississippi winter. Fellow rushing horticulturists, Java Chapman, producer, all the other folks at MPV, we wish you a warm weekend, and we'll see you on the other side. Meanwhile, I'm thinking about getting home and getting dirty. See y'all next week. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Thank you.